Hello my friends, today we are back in Luminar Neo and we are going to take a close look at Super Sharp Tool. I have this image over here of this hummingbird. As you can see, I had a whole set where I photographed this bird. And this one image, for some reason, I missed focus. As you can see, it's a little bit soft, but I really like the composition. I like how the wings are opened up and everything else in this series, if you look out, they are like very, very sharp, tack sharp, except that one um, image. I don't know what happened. My camera must have missed focus. Maybe it was my fault. It doesn't matter, but today we will look at the uh, super sharp, see if it works. And also I will show you a little trick to, you know, make it work when things don't work with super sharp. So, Let's get right into it. I have this image and then when you go to edit, super sharp is right here onto your extension panel. When you click on it to open it, you don't have many adjustments here. All you have is a motion blur and you have low, medium and high and then a masking tool for it. Let's zoom in at 100% so we can see what we're working with. And I will click on the low, see what happens. Now, I'm not going to speed up this. I want you to see exactly how long it takes. So let's see what kind of result this come up with. And it's still thinking. You can see this graphic on the screen. Still thinking. I am hopeful that the program will be able to fix this image. All right, let's see. Well, it's definitely looking sharper. If I go here to this eyeball on the bottom, this is the before, this is the after, before and after. The eye definitely looks sharper. It does create some artifacts over here on the feathers on the belly. Look at that before and after. But to correct that, you would use a mask with a brush and just apply this um, super sharp just to the eye. And then it's not going to affect the feathers on the breast. So you see, this is the before, this is the after. Now, this definitely fixed a little bit of the blurriness, but it's still not tack sharp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset this image. I'm going to go to action, revert to original, and let's try again. And this time, maybe go to the middle. Maybe I didn't give it enough super sharpening. See if we can get a little bit better result. I think the low super sharp mode did, did a good job. You know, it definitely made it sharper but it's not tack sharp. And if it would be an image that I just want to post to Instagram or Facebook, I think that would be good enough. Now, most of the time you'll have a um, blurry image. It's probably going to be your wildlife, your birding, your animals, because if you're just taking landscape photos or flowers or whatever, it's should be no reason for it to be blurry because you can stay there and take your shots as many times as you need but birds insects they will fly away and you know maybe you only have like a short moment to take the second now the artifacts on the medium super sharp it's completely horrible in here this is the before this is the after let's look at the eyeball though because that's what i'm interested in and the eye is actually not looking bad. Let's see. This is the before, this is the after. So if I would just mask this onto the eye, I think would be really acceptable. So let's see this. So now this is the before, this is the after, before and after. I would call that really acceptable. But I think we can do better. And this is where I'm going to show you my trick on how I will tackle this kind of problem. I'm going to revert it to the original. Now, if I go back to my images, 
you see this one image, the head is turned to the side. And this will happen to you when you take images of wildlife. You will get a series of them from the same shoot. Usually when you photograph birds, you will have your camera go in burst mode. So you'll go at, you know, high frames per second. And when you click that shutter, it's going to take a burst of whatever, 15, 20 images. And in that burst, most likely you will have a couple of photos that are in sharp focus. And for this image, you see the head is turned to the side. And I think I can use one of these other images to fix my favorite photo. Now, the two images that I think will work best is maybe this one because the head is completely to the side. Or maybe this one over here. It's more of this 45 degree angle, kind of like this one this one over here. So I think I'm going to use this one. So uh, let's see how I would use this. I would use this by using layers. So click on edit, go to load image. And I would load my other image where the bird was just looking sideways on the branch. And I'm going to click open and this will open it here into my layers. Double click on it to load it as a layer. And you see if I increase it to 100%, this is my image where the eye is very, very sharp. So if I go to 100%, you will see tack sharp image on this bird. Great. I'm going to go back to fit to screen. And here is where I will drop the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. Then what I need to do, because this bird is looking to the left, I need to turn it so it looks to the right. So I'll go over here and flip it so now it looks to the right. Now I can move this image. I can also make it, you see the head on the bird underneath is smaller, so I can resize it and make it smaller and even smaller. There we go. Then I can rotate it. You see, I need to make sure I match the beak and the position. I can rotate it maybe even a little bit more, something like that. And now what I'm trying to do is overlap the eyeballs. So let's reduce the opacity even a little bit more. Are the eyeballs lined up? Just about here it's lined up. So now I will increase opacity to 100%. I am going to zoom in at 100%. And then with masking, I will use a brush or a radial gradient. Let's use the radial gradient. And I'm just going to mask in the eye. I want to bring from this image just the eye. Maybe something like that, but I need to invert it because now I'm selecting everything else but the eye. So there you go. Maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger. There you go. Nice feathering. And let's see what that gives us. If I go to properties, now I can zoom in at 100%. And as you can see, now we have a nice sharp eye. And nobody would know that we replaced that eye from a different image. So let's go command zero to fit to screen. And if I turn this layer on and off, let's see hide layer. Ooh, the eye is rotated. You see, I didn't do a good job. Show layer. We need to rotate it more. So I'm gonna go to layer properties and I need to rotate it. And uh, I made it too small. The eye underneath was bigger. So I'm going to make it bigger again. I want to match it as much as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because you have to remember people that are seeing this image, they don't know what the one underneath looked like. So let's see now if I hide this layer. This is the original eye show layer. This is the eye that I put on after. But when you go to fit to screen and you look from far away, you do not know what was there before. And I think it's looking great. And now we have an image with a very sharp eye. By the way, if you're photographing insects, birds, animals, the eye has to be sharp. If your eye is not sharp, then your image is pretty much, you know, a throwaway. That's the only part that really needs to be in focus. And this is how I would fix this image. And now I can post it to my social media or wherever. And nobody will know that I replaced that eye. And they will think, wow, look at the nice capture. The wings are opened up. The eye is sharp. You just cut it in the right moment. 
I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.